Skanderbeg's speech to the princes before his death. The following speech is taken from the book by the author Stefan Zanovich, with the title, Le Grand Castriotto di Albany, Histoire. The text of 131 pages was published in 1779 by the publishing house J. J. Kessler, Frankfurt. Jurgut Castriotti, sick, could not avoid death and therefore invites princes, ambassadors, generals, and the main leaders of the country to his hearth to leave his last bequests as befits a great warrior. Before our hero begins his speech, he orders his only son, John, then ten years old, to be among the guests. The speech of the Prince of Mati and the King of the Albanians can be found on pages 70 to 89 of the book, written in French. According to the author of the work, this is how Jurgut Castriotti expressed himself. I am at the threshold of the grave. I am leaving you a kingdom strong enough to defend it, but with a successor incapable of age to rule it. However, if in the future you become brave and virtuous, you may withstand all the attacks of your enemies. It is not the surface of the land that makes a throne respectable, but the skill of him who sits on it. If you are mischievous, the servant of your ministers, and naive to the flattery of your courtiers, then nothing will be easier than to topple from the highest pinnacle where you are. Virtue must be the foundation of the throne. Virtue is not a fantasy. Perhaps they will tell you one day, but remember that the one who loves you he says, he is a traitor, a crafty one, who, to reign in your country, will suggest to you false maxims, which sooner or later will cause your overthrow. Having virtue as your guide, flatterers and infidels will depart from you, virtuous, you can easily hold the empire that is leaving you shaken by the constant war, strengthen it, restore it through rest and quietness. Create uncensored inscriptions over the entire surface of the kingdom where all the injustices and violence that can be practiced by the rulers of your provinces can be published. Do the same for their friends or family who live in your yard, who hide these violations or use them under the pretext of justice and necessity. Examine everything for yourselves, and if the magistrate, the soldier, or the clergyman, be deceitful and unjust, then without mercy hang him on the stake in the place of the crime you will see that his successor will become just and humane, when just having assumed the direction of power, you will take care of justice, which is the foundation of all virtues. You will protect the artisans, as the most useful people of the areas of your power, and prevent their oppression by the rich. Pride and luxury make the rich insensitive to the misfortunes of the poor, who have neither titles, ranks, nor support. You must be gentle and loving with your people, look often among them, converse with them, Ask them if your wishes for justice have been executed by your ministers. The prince who is shut up with his courtiers is looked upon by his people as an enemy and a tyrant. Listen to the complaints and demands of your people so calmly that you inspire confidence in them to help you correct the abuses and misfortunes of the state. See to it that your nation grows through the Catholic religion, but do not persecute anyone who follows it under compulsion. The sun, which is the image of God, shines without distinction for the Turk as well as for the Christian. Anyone who advises to fight for the sake of God is a deceiver who wants to sacrifice the truth for his own interests. God is powerful, he can do everything by himself, without anyone's help. If fate makes you a wanderer, poor or needy, never change your religion for interest. Close from the beginning the disagreements of theologians and hypocrites, which are the most dangerous for the happiness of a state. We have seen the most flourishing empires torn and shaken by these fanatics, see the empire of Constantine laid waste by Mohammed, and Prince Jean Paleolog trampled by the horses of the Arabs. He was superstitious, his priests ambitious and ignorant, his courtiers false and depraved with luxury, and now the prince, priests and courtiers are dead and dying in slavery. If you are fortunate enough to have philosophers in your governments who are enlightened by the light of reason and not by false systems, let them write in peace and react to the prejudices and machinations of anyone who speaks in the name of God with purpose to silence the king and justice. You will protect them against the overzealousness of hypocritical rulers by rewarding them with jobs in your courts and courts. When they speak ill of someone, you will listen to them with half an ear. You will be kind to all classes of people. As a reason for the distinction of rank that you will soon have in society, you must distinguish yourself from others through generosity, which is the distinguishing character of princes. A monarch, even a poor one, must be generous. 
protect merit and reward it wherever it is found. Kindness should be accompanied by a generous heart. Man builds temples, erects altars to God thanks to his goodness. Avoid forever to your age, circle and race the shame of having people depressed by your cruelty, pride, or ignorance. Remember that man is born for the happiness of each other. Arm yourself with courage and determination in adversity, with prudence in prosperity. Do not sink into idleness, it is the mother of all vices. Do not close your eyes to your neighbors and their treaties, they will wait for the moment when you will be weak to accuse you and assert false claims on inheritance that I'm leaving you. Don't use spies to know what people are saying about your administration. Do your work properly, let mankind speak and write what they will. You are given the opportunity for everyone from your circle to write to you, you will employ your secretaries to answer for various or public matters, but the secrets of the state must remain between you. Do not despise anyone, the smallest and the poorest can bring you down as well as help you with his advice and encouragement. You are patient in matters of war, fearless in dangers, gentle and humane, never cruel and hot-tempered. Hide the pain that your misfortunes may cause you. Your enemies will always be ready to insult you for misfortunes, and ministers to betray you. Invite educated foreigners among you by giving them an advisory role even if they are not noble and rich. The powers granted to the nobility are a product of politics. You can use the nobles however you want. Ignorant rich men you will caress, so you will save your wealth for the maintenance of the army, and you will have a splendid court thanks to the proud but foolish, who have no virtue but gold. Don't be shy about your feelings. Declare openly to your courtiers, that he who will lie to you and send you down the wrong path in administration, will be hanged on the stake without any pardon. To the poets who will weave you verses, to convince you that you are the greatest, the most generous, the most wonderful, the greatest warrior of all kings, send in return a piece of paper, ink and a feather from a courtier of unknown, with orders to testify the truth of what they write, and if they cannot do so, to confine themselves to giving advice, hinting at whether they continue to write such dangerous nonsense, they will be drowned by you as a holy person of truth. Take care to always have good and disciplined soldiers, so that your soldiers do not become lazy. You train and treat them not as slaves, but as your comrades. When you are at war, you will lead the army as a general and in battle you will fight as a soldier. The name of king is a very honorable title, but this title carries great weight and difficult tasks to accomplish. The main thing is to be accepted and respected in your circle. God has not given us the supreme power to plunge us into the abyss, to be defenders of the public cause. To a gentle heart and a virtuous soul, the general welfare of your people is the greatest pleasure that can be experienced. Negligence and a kind of kindness that we call the frivolity of a prince cause harm to people, and you know the king's role is to protect them. Drive away from you court astrologers and gold and diamond manufacturing chemists. A prince is always rich when he is wise and spiritually exalted. Your name will be inscribed on a white marble slab in black letters above the doors of your prison castles. Woe to the governor who abjured the king's innocence, who aggravated the punishment of the guilty by his avarice and zeal, protect the dear and good people, punish the evil spirits. You are sensitive to injury, but even more so to the service of your people and the friendship of people like you. The climax of a war is disorienting, uncertainty, danger, must be felt. Then caution and courage will serve you better than wealth. You have to know how to win, but don't forget that you can also lose. Challenge yourself, don't lose your temper with anger, because then the simple becomes evil and the king a monster. Remember that the Turkish policy is to sow discord among the Christian princes, all their greatness is found in this excellent policy which makes more conquests than their weapons. Finally, if you are jealous that I am leaving you an heir who prevents you from taking the throne, remember that I was your father, and the sword you will use only to overthrow the enemy. You will have numerous connections with the court of Rome, of which I have hitherto been a supporter and protector. My interests have forced me to adapt my politics to hers. The circumstances in which I found myself did not allow me to fight the Turkish usurpations and the claims of the Pope. For the good of my provinces I have always been happy with the actions I have taken. Rome is proud only of failed princes. Rome, fearing me, 
has always flattered me. She changes maxims and positions according to the occasion, but the fear of losing her lands to the attacks of Muhammad has forced her to remain humble towards me, acknowledging to me all the rights, titles, and possessions realized during my battles. The popes have never managed to manipulate an old soldier like me, but they will not hesitate to do such a thing to you because of your young age and lack of experience to govern, to serve. Remember, that of the many practices they use to achieve their goals, the strongest is confession. But it is easy to understand, when the priest will want to know more than your sins, return him as a deceiver to his place, and condemn him as such, so that he may serve as an example to his successor. However, it is very dangerous to openly oppose the Pope, this great idol of our religion. He is a man like others, with his passions and weaknesses. If the Pope sends you pardons, relics, blessings, receive them with respect, and honor them with your people by giving you the main example. But if the Pope tries to increase the number of priests and monks to extract money from your provinces, or incite you to wage wars in the name of God, may the vengeful lightning strike you and your descendants if you accept. God takes revenge on his offenders, so he does not need the help of man. Don't threaten Rome when it doesn't threaten you. But declare war on anyone who tries to destroy the joy of the people and the legitimacy of the throne. You will forbid any inhabitant who is under your government to become either a priest or a monk before reaching the age of forty. To be nourished by the work of others, the man, male, must first have contributed to the support of the community from which he wishes to be separated in order to enjoy his life. These priests and monks must help you protect the nation in in times of war, because in times of peace this nation feeds them without using them. If the Pope objects, obey him gently and only if necessary use the sword. Such a policy will reconcile you to the paternal love of his successors, and you will become an example and a leader to all kings, who cowardly, weak, ignorant, foolish, usurped by the Pope and their ministers, the power which God has given them to spread the happiness of the nations, where they should be the masters and fathers.